Eli, Eli, Lama Azaftani. Those words might sound familiar to you, as they are in fact the opening words to Psalm 22 in Hebrew. But you might recognize them better and in a form more similar to Aramaic as Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. But typically, you wouldn't recognize a passage in the Old Testament in Hebrew or Aramaic as an English speaker. Except this passage also shows up in the New Testament as one of the final statements, one of the final quotations that Jesus makes during his human life. And we can find this passage in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verse 33. We can read this passage in Mark 15, 33. When the sixth hour came, darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they began saying, Behold, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave him a drink, saying, Let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. There are multiple lenses we could use to analyze this passage, but today I would like to specifically focus on why Jesus' words were misinterpreted. So to achieve this, I would first like to look at the context surrounding Elijah in the first century. And then I would like to look at the language that was used and why there could be some room for confusion. So first, if we assume that it did sound like he was calling out for help from Elijah, the fact that he's calling for Elijah feels out of context historically, because we don't have to be experts in history to know that Elijah was no longer around in the first century. In fact, Elijah hadn't been around for over 800 years. But this isn't the first time in the Gospels that we see Elijah mentioned, as we know that John the Baptist was directly questioned if he were the Elijah, and even some wondered if Jesus was the Elijah. And this expectation for an Elijah figure to come on the scene ultimately stems from the prophecy we see in Malachi, where we read of an Elijah figure that would come about before the coming day of the Lord. And the scribes and the Pharisees of the day additionally interpreted this Elijah figure to be a precursor to the Messiah, who would bring about a messianic reign, a messianic kingdom that would overthrow the Roman oppressors. So while Elijah was already on the forefronts of the minds of these Jewish people, we also need to consider the timing of when this event happened, because this was the 14th day of Aviv, the first month of the year, which is Passover. And within a traditional Jewish home, they have their Passover Seder meal that evening, and they will set aside a full place setting with a glass of wine for Elijah, and they'll even crack open their front door with the hopes that if he comes, he will feel welcome to enter. So with this framing, we need to keep in mind that Elijah, while was, he was already a figure on the minds of the people, it would have been especially so on the day of Passover. So now with that framing for Elijah, I would like to revisit the question of why the language Jesus spoke was subject to interpretation and was misunderstood. So while I first read from the Gospel of Mark, I would now like to look at the Gospel of Matthew, which shares an account of the same events. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, we read, About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So what's interesting to note here is that both of these passages include a transliterated form of what Jesus actually spoke, and then a translation of what its meaning was. And this is important because if reading this passage in English or Greek or nearly any other language, it wouldn't be clear how there was the misinterpretation of this sounding like Elijah. But what's also interesting is that the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark both transliterate the term, my God, 
slightly differently. As in Mark, it appears as Eloi, and in Matthew, it appears as Eli. And while that one character difference, whether or not there's an O in that word, may not seem significant to an English speaker, it's actually important as we're trying to understand what language was spoken here. Because Eloi appears to be a transliteration of Aramaic, whereas Eli appears to be a transliteration in Hebrew. So that raises the question, what language did Jesus speak? Was it Hebrew or was it Aramaic? And the answer is actually a bit complicated because it was likely both. But to explain this, we first need to step back in time to understand that the Jewish people, while they originally would have likely spoken and written Hebrew when they had their own country within the nation of Judea and Israel, once they were exiled to Assyria and to Babylon, they were thrust into a different culture and society that primarily spoke Aramaic as their official language. So once they returned from their captivity back to their homeland, they had brought back Aramaic with them and it had taken over as their common language, whereas Hebrew had now become something reserved for reading scripture for prayers. And they now referred to it as the holy language or the holy tongue, which in Hebrew is the Lashon HaChodesh. So with this, we can see both from archeology span and from history that there was evidence of Aramaic being used in the first century. But we don't even have to look outside the New Testament to see the influence of Aramaic because we can see it both in the name of places like Golgotha and the names of people like Barnabas and Barabbas. And you may also be familiar with the term Abba, which means father in Aramaic, which is in contrast to the word Avi, which means father in Hebrew. So the fact that Aramaic was commonly known and spoken in the first century, you might think would give evidence to the fact that Jesus was quoting the Psalm in Aramaic, except there are a couple of problems for this. First, if the common people understood Aramaic, it's less likely that they would have misunderstood the quotation from Psalm 22. But secondarily, the actual term for my God in Aramaic doesn't sound like the name Elijah in Aramaic. So to show this, the name Elijah in Aramaic is actually Elias or Eli. Whereas the term for my God in Aramaic is Elohi or Alahi. And those names actually don't sound that similar in Aramaic. So to weigh in on this argument of which language Jesus was actually speaking in, there's actually an interesting text which has preserved the Gospel of Matthew in Hebrew. And the oldest known copy of this text appears in a book called Even Bohan, which was written by the rabbi Shem Tov in the year 1380. And this text was originally considered by scholars to simply be a transla translation from the Greek Gospel of Matthew into Hebrew. But in the 1980s, a man by the name of George Howard did additional study into the textual differences of this document and found that it actually had some unique features that didn't appear in the Greek version. He then published his own English translation of this Hebrew Gospel of Matthew in 1987. So if we read George Howard's translation of Matthew 27, 45, it reads as follows. Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, in the holy language, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So there are a couple interesting things to this passage. First, is that the Hebrew here is identical to the Hebrew that shows up in Psalm 22. But the most revealing thing here is that it says Jesus quoted this Psalm in the holy language, which as I mentioned earlier, was known by the Jewish people to be the language of Hebrew, which was the language of the Old Testament and not Aramaic. But also what's interesting here is that it's explicitly mentioned that he quoted in the holy language. The reason this is interesting is because if Hebrew was always being spoken, there would have been no need to call this out here. So this seems to affirm the fact that Aramaic would have been the commonly spoken language, even by Jesus. And yet in this quotation of the Old Testament passage, he quoted it 
in the original Hebrew. And by understanding this quotation to be in Hebrew, it actually helps explain why there was the confusion. Because to an Aramaic-speaking audience, if they were hearing a quotation from Psalm 22 in Hebrew, to them, it would have sounded like he was saying, Eli, Eli. And if you heard me calling out Eli, Eli, you would think I was referring to my friend Eli. You wouldn't be thinking about the fact that in Hebrew, Eli or Eli means my God. Because in Hebrew, God is El and Eli is my God. So in Hebrew, it's actually quite simple to think that Eli could have sounded like the Aramaic form of Elias for Elijah. So now I'd like to return to my original question, which is, why did the people misunderstand the words that Jesus spoke? Now that we have the framing, let's revisit this passage of Jesus' crucifixion one last time. First, it was the day of Passover. It was the day that Jews traditionally expected Elijah to show up on the scene. And also, the sky had been darkened for three hours, which I'm sure made it feel like something supernatural was about to occur. And second, the bystanders were likely fluent in Aramaic, but only had a limited vocabulary of Hebrew. So when Jesus cried out in a loud voice in Hebrew, Eli, Eli, lama asaftani, they heard Elias and thought, perhaps Elijah will appear at the last moment to save him. But then Jesus took his last breath. The days as they had unfolded this day was not the way the Jew Jewish people had expected or hoped, for they were looking for a messianic reign and for liberation from their Roman oppressors. But after three days, Jesus would be resurrected and he would explain how all these events needed to take place and that ultimately through it, a means of redemption would be made available to all mankind.